Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1758, James Monroe was born. He grew up to be the fifth president of the United States. In 1770, British Captain James Cook lands at Botany Bay in Australia, aboard the Endeavour. In 1778, Maryland becomes the seventh state to ratify the U.S. Constitution. In 1789, Captain William Bly of the British ship Bounty and 18 of his men were set adrift by master's mate Fletcher Christian. In 1847, George B. Vachon becomes the first African American to be granted admission into the New York State Bar Association. In 1848, slavery is abolished in all French colonies. In 1855, the first veterinary college in the United States is incorporated in Boston, Massachusetts. In 1881, Billy the Kid escaped from prison in New Mexico, where he had been convicted of murder and sentenced to death. In 1908, Czech businessman and expert Nazi manipulator Oskar Schindler is born today. In 1914, 181 people die in a coal mine collapse in West Virginia. In 1916, Ferruccio Lamborghini is born today and goes on to make the coolest cars ever. In 1922, WOI in Ames, Iowa becomes the first licensed educational radio station in the United States. In 1923, Wembley Stadium in Great Britain opens. In 1926, American author Harper Lee was born. She wrote To Kill a Mockingbird in 1960. In 1930, Independence, Kansas hosts organized baseball's first night game. In 1934, U.S. President Roosevelt signs the Homeowners Loan Act. In 1937, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein is born today. In 1937 as well, Pan Am flies the first commercial flight across the Pacific Ocean. In 1940, Glenn Miller records his huge song, Pennsylvania 65,000. In 1942, the nightly dim outs begin along the east coast of the United States. In 1944, in what becomes known as the Tiger Exercise, during a D-Day rehearsal, German torpedo boats off of Great Britain kill 750 U.S. soldiers. In 1945, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini was executed today. Good riddance. In 1947, Norwegian explorer Thor Heyerdahl begins his journey on Kontiki. In 1952, the Allied occupation of Japan came to an end after seven years. Also in 1952, Dwight D. Eisenhower resigns as Supreme Commander of NATO. In 1956, Cincinnati Reds outfielder Frank Robinson hits his first of 586 home runs. In 1958, U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon begins a goodwill tour of South America. In 1963, at the 17th Tony Awards, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf and A Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum win. In 1965, Luciano Pavarotti makes his debut at La Scala Milan in Franco Zeffirelli's production of La Boheme. In 1966, at the 38th Academy Awards, The Sound of Music, Julie Christie, and Lee Marvin win. In 1967, citing religious reasons, American boxer Muhammad Ali refused induction into the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. He is stripped of his boxing title. Also in 1967, the Douglas Aircraft Company merges with the McDonnell Aircraft Corporation to form McDonnell Douglas. In 1968, 10-year-old Mary Bell strangles a 4-year-old boy in Great Britain and then does it again with another little boy. In 1969, Charles de Gaulle resigns as French president. Also in 1969, at the 4th Academy of Country Music Awards, Glenn Campbell and Kathy Taylor win. In 1973, over 6,500 pound bombs accidentally detonate over an 18 hour period in a rail yard in Northern California, damaging 5,500 buildings and destroying the town of Antelope. In 1974, Spanish actress Penelope Cruz is born today. In 1975, in what turns out to be his final television interview, John Lennon is the guest on Tom Snyder's Tomorrow program. In 1985, Billy Martin is named the New York Yankees manager for the fourth time. 
In 1986, Soviet TV news announces that there was a nuclear accident at Chernobyl two days after it happened. In 1987, the NBA announces four expansion teams will be created over the next two years. Charlotte, North Carolina, Miami, Florida, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Orlando, Florida. In 1988, the roof is torn off of an Aloha Airlines Boeing 737 in flight, killing a flight attendant. In 1990, a chorus line closes at the Schubert Theater in New York City after 6,000 137 performances. In 1994, CIA officer Aldrich Ames admits to giving U.S. secrets to the Soviet Union. In 1996, Australian Martin Bryant began a killing spree that left 35 people dead and 18 others wounded in the Port Arthur area of Tasmania. In 2001, California billionaire Dennis Tito becomes the first ever space tourist. In 2003, Apple launched the iTunes Store. Also in 2003, Andre Agassi recaptures the number one world ranking to become the oldest top-ranked male in tennis history. In 2004, 60 Minutes shows the first torture pictures from Abu Ghraib prison in Baghdad. In 2012, a tent collapse at a downtown bar in St. Louis, Missouri kills one person and injures 110 more. In 2014, Craig Ferguson announces he will leave The Late Late Show at the end of this year. In 2018, the Seattle Seahawks draft Shaquem Griffin, making him the first one-handed person to be drafted into the NFL. Also in 2018, the Indian government announces that electricity has now reached every Indian village. Yeah, in 2018. In 2019, American diver Victor Viscovo makes the world record deepest dive ever to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. That's 10,927 meters or 35,849 feet. And he finds a plastic bag. In 2020, according to Johns Hopkins, the number of U.S. confirmed cases of COVID-19 passes 1 million, while the death toll of 58,365 surpasses that of the number of U.S. soldiers killed in Vietnam. Also in 2020, the U.S. Department of Defense releases three declassified videos of possible UFOs from 2004 and 2015. I knew it. And lastly, in 2021, U.S. President Joe Biden makes a speech to a joint session of Congress calling for a new era of government spending. I wonder what that means. Hey, thanks for watching the show today. I really appreciate it. Make sure that you subscribe, give me a comment, do whatever you need to do, but show me some love. I appreciate it. Check back in with me tomorrow.